Hey ya, it's Sandra here. Welcome back to another video. I'm excited to share my thoughts on the Marvel Rivals closed beta test as I have been given the privilege to play it for a little bit. As a Marvel fan, I thoroughly enjoyed my time playtesting this game and of course had some fun doing so. First, I wanted to give my genuine thoughts while playing this game. Oh, and in case you don't know, I stream Marvel Rivals, Overwatch, and some variety nightly on twitch.tv slash Sendriel. Hope to see you there. To start things off, as a big Overwatch player, I do end up comparing this game a little bit to Overwatch as I feel like they're very like similar in categories of not fully FPS, but not fully a MOBA game either. I will say my favorite thing about Marvel Rivals so far are the screaming goats on the escort map. I hope they keep them. On top with my opinion about the maps, the breakables is a very interesting concept. I felt like they have not made any gameplay difficult in any way, no intense frame drops were experienced either as things break. However, it did make LOSing ults like Scarlet Witch Diva Bomb a bit more difficult as it was hard to see if I was safe or not. Hey. My first suggestion for this game is to have a better indicator of safe slash not safe on the UI when ults like Scarlet, Iron Man, Magneto ults are used. <laughs> Also, I miss having the colorblind accessibility that I use in Overwatch. This will make the UI better to read overall and of course help people that are impaired. Something else that I've experienced that was a bit troubling is that some audio cues were not accurate. It's sometimes hard to tell if an enemy was behind you because bullet sounds and footsteps are not fully polished yet. And of course, being in the beta, there is room for improvement. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that adjusts things. With an Overwatch 2 comparison, I do like how the scoreboard only shows kills, deaths, and assists. The scoreboard isn't cluttered by everyone's damage, healing amounts, etc. This also leaves room for less blaming and hopefully less toxicity of others. So I've had my fair share playing all three roles of Vanguard, Duelist, and Strategist, so I will be talking about all of them. Even though the character roster is limited, it's nice to see more counters to the Strategist Ultimates as I find them to be very good right now. As of this video, Jeff the Landshark can easily counter Luna's ult by uh, eating her. More so talking about Strategist or Overwatch 2 support role comparison, it feels like unless you're a strategist with high healing output, damage, and or utility, you're going to be blamed for throwing. So here's like Luna, Mantis, and Rocket have high healing output and utility to their team, but also have headshot potential and high damage. This puts Loki in a tough spot since he doesn't do headshot damage, has little damage output, and his healing kit and kit overall is very niche. Luna and Mantis have headshot potential. Also, they have stuns and speed boosts, damage boosts that the team can take advantage of. And of course, Warlock has a mass Overwatch 1 Mercy Res. So when comparing to Loki, he just feels a little bit selfish as his utility only benefits the team to a certain extent. It seems like Loki's lack of kit is trying to balance out with his broken ultimate. He can copy anyone on the team, enemy or friendly, and instantly press their ultimate, enabling team wipes or an instant mass res if you copy a warlock. So, a better echo ult. This also runs to my point of the damage slash healing stats being hidden during the game, so less flaming can occur. Right now, I have the most hours on Loki as I do enjoy his gameplay a lot. I love baiting tanks and then quickly teleporting to my clone and then going invisible to run away. But while I do this juke, our team lacks healing. So I have to remember to get back to my team as quickly as possible. Moving on to the Vanguard or tank role in Overwatch 2, I've noticed somewhat of double shield coming back with Magneto and Doctor Strange. With more flying duelists, this of course can get countered. More on that later. I've noticed myself liking heroes with high mobility in this game, so Venom was my first tank that I wanted to try. 
and also he was just released with his closed beta. Right now he seems kind of broken with his instant extra health skill he has, but a lot of heroes seem broken overall. And if if every hero is broken, are they truly broken? Or are this or is it just business as usual? I was also liking Doctor Strange a bit, mostly because I'm biased towards his flying ability, but his ult is a pretty good to combo with other ults like Storm's ult or Iron Man's ult as well. I did however find myself and other Doctor Stranges in general not use a teleport a lot. I wonder why is that? Sure it takes time to set up, but if you get a good placement it can be a game changer. I also noticed players using Doctor Strange's shield off cooldown along with like Magneto's shield. Thing. So it appears he's being used mostly for his shield instead of bothering to set up a TP strat. Last but not least, the good old duelist role. I've managed to play current duelists. I've managed to play all current duelists and the closed beta tests and so far I have not found my favorite yet, which is shocking to me. The uniqueness of each hero is there, so any hero can be good. It doesn't feel like a specific duelist is just too OP or overpowered yet. This can be good or bad. Depending on your opinions of OTPs, one trick ponies, one true pairs, whichever. Starting off with heroes like Hela and Namor, they both basically play similarly with how the projectiles do headshot damage and, and the delivery of each uh, bullet. The vertical mobility is decent. If you play Jet and Valorant, you might like these two more. With Namor, they have a getaway skill to help them survive a little bit. Same thing with Hela. And both of their ults do decent damage. And if you come from an FPS game and can land those headshots, I highly recommend these two. Moving on to the flyers, Iron Man and Storm and maybe a little bit of Star-Lord. I ended up liking Iron Man and Storm because their flying ability is very good for getting behind Vanguard tanks with shield and for flanking. Both ults do decent damage and there aren't much threats when you fly out of range but this also means you get out of range of your healers but you won't really be shot down unless there's a punisher soldier 76 fans rejoice because we have another gunner in this game if you have a great tracking record and you just land those headshots taking out squishies will be a piece of cake with this guy his ult is also very good for bursting down tanks and you just basically turn into a bastion too with your skill speaking of soldier there is also a tracer comparison aka star lord but of course in this game mobility is a lot better so he has flying a little bit i'm curious to see how many vertical maps they can pump out with a lot of heroes having high mobility and flying skills usually overwatch players do not like the verticality of maps because it's more difficult to get on high ground Moving on to melee character Magic and Black Panther and Spider-Man, they have similar brawly gameplay and can be very good if you use your cooldowns well. Basically, you will have to dive in and skill out or risk being surrounded and getting eliminated. Of course, I can't forget about Scarlet Witch, the DPS mortar in the game. I've also had fun playing her, as you can get some air with your shift and slow fall and do damage from above. This makes picking off strategics in the back kind of easy, but not entirely, of course. In general, each hero has a unique kit, and perhaps the way you use it is up to you. What if I'm flanking with Scarlet slash Hello or diving in as Panther or Magic? All of the playstyles are very fun. Perhaps this is why I've not decided to one-trick anyone in specific yet. I'm interested to see how and which brawler heroes can counteract with the heroes that have flying abilities. Spider-Man appears to be the biggest counter for flying heroes since he can slingshot himself to one. There's also a lot of potential for a closed beta test when it comes to adding to the hero roster, so I'm interested to see who they add in the future. Overall, Marvel Rivals has a lot of potential. The graphics, combat system, and unique of each character is great. 
but there's room for improvement in terms of general bug fixes, accessibility, roster size, and sound indicators. I'm looking forward to seeing how this game evolves before its full release. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.